Hello everybody. Thank you for watching this webinar. This is the third of our webinars that we have conducted at IGUS. My name is Matthew Aldridge and I'm the Managing Director of IGUS in Northampton. And I wish to talk to you today about smart plastics and how these can help implement and deliver industry 4.0 solutions in your machine and in your factory. So this is the rough agenda. I want to introduce IGUS in the UK uh, to you, um, talk about Industry 4, what does that actually mean? And then we'll go on to smart plastics, um, talk about some applications, the product family and group that we've developed um, under this umbrella term, the benefits which can be delivered to customers and users and this this whole uh, presentation should take roughly 15 to 20 minutes and we will have a time for Q&A at the end. IGUS was formed in the 1960s in Germany and 25 years ago a UK subsidiary was set up. IGUS has been um, at the forefront of delivering products, engineering products uh, made from plastic uh, compounds. And there are two main products which have been produced over years. This is a range of plastic bearings and a range of energy chains for carrying cables. Uh, we've seen a drive from our customers to supply these in the form of systems and sub-assemblies. So we've moved from um, being a mere component supplier to supplying components and systems. We, uh, in the UK, offer local assembly and installation at customers, and we have a, a countrywide support and sales engineers to um, visit customers and potential users of IGUS products. As a business, we're dedicated to the success of our customers. Um, our motto is plastics for longer life. And that is that we um, deliver parts manufactured from our plastics, which lower the cost of um, a customer's machine, but also give a technical benefit such as longer life, lower friction, no maintenance. There's always technical benefits. As mentioned, we have um, this pressure really from our customers to deliver systems to save money and time. Uh, in the center of the slide there, you can see what we call a ready chain rack. That is where uh, our e-chains are populated with cables and hoses, and they're supplied on this rack, which can be simply wheeled up to a machine um, unbolted or released onto the machine and fitted. This saves hours of labor and, at the production line. And this shows how, um, by working with customers, we can um, develop technologies, systems, processes to help deliver cost savings and productivity gains to customers. And um, we will see in a moment how smart plastics forms sort of the next iteration of this. First of all, I would like to take a look at the development of industry over the last few hundred years to see what we really mean by Industry 4.0. So if we assume that uh, industry as we know it really started with the Industrial Revolution, we could label that Industry 1. That's at the end of the 18th century the invention of the steam engine, um, and then um, things progressed, of course, to um, the uh, start of production lines typified by Henry Ford and uh, the Model T production line. Um, and that is where um, products which were previously um, out of scope for the general um, uh, consumer became uh, affordable due to the uh, cost benefits which could be gained by mass producing products. Um, and we can label that uh, move to mass production as industry 2.0. In the 1970s, there was a move um, to 
use computers and computer systems within uh, manufacturing companies. So this could be for uh, monitoring production processes and for even things like payroll and um, increased automation. Uh, so that use of computers and the digital transformation could be uh, labeled Industry 3.0. Um, and Industry 4, which we'll speak about in a moment, would is sort of the next step from that. And that's something which could potentially lead to lights out production. And that's really where we are today. So what is Industry 4? Well, um, this slide here shows that it isn't just one simple, single uh, solution. It's not like the invention of the steam engine or um, something like that. There are lots of different technologies. These can be existing, emerging, or new technologies, which are all integrating together. Um, so this could be the idea of big data or increased bandwidth, fiber optic uh, connections, uh, reliability, and feedback to machines. And getting all of these um, systems to talk together to um, give this um, better productivity within a factory and within a process. Here's a quote from Steve Bramley, who's the deputy director of Gambica, who is on record as saying, if UK manufacturers were to invest as much in Industry 4 as their German counterparts, they could boost their revenues by 20 billion pounds. So this is something which cannot be ignored. We can't afford to ignore it. I'm going to show you a quick video now just on an introduction to IGUS and smart plastics to try and set the scene for the rest of the presentation. So you can see on these machines here, they're all using IGUS E-chains and drive-in slides as well. And these two systems are providing feedback to this unit called an iSense unit. And that in turn is communicating to this unit. This is monitoring the performance and health of machine parts. This can be done anywhere in the world, online, um, and it will give an early alert to any potential failures that could occur. Potentially, this could le lead to just-in-time replacements as well. This reduces downtime, increases lifetime, and makes maintenance predictable. And that, that is one of the key benefits which is delivered by this move to smart plastics. So now we can start to talk specifically about the smart plastic products which are manufactured by IGUS. We will talk about the iSense and iCom unit and the cables, chains, and bearings which we manufacture. This video shows the IGUS chain system equipped with smart plastic sensors operating in real life. And um, you can see in the background there, there is an iSense data collection unit. We take a closer look at what's going on here. In this photo, um, there are actually four smart systems that are working um, here, and um, we can we go through these uh, one by one. First of all, there's the ECW unit. This energy chain wear sensor. This is simply an RFID chip, which is built into the chain, and this detects 
when wear has reached a predetermined limit within the chain. This then sends an alert um, to the iSense unit, which in turn can send a, um, a message to either the internal maintenance system in the factory or to the iCom unit and to iGUS, who can then alert the customer. There are many different ways of um, managing that process. Secondly, within that chain, there is a system which is known as ECB. This is the brake detection system. And this is a, a, a wire which runs the full length of the chain, which has a sensor at the end. And if the chain uh, was to break, let's say someone was to drive a forklift into the side of the, of the um, chain, then um, the unit would detect that the chain is broken and could be set to immediately shut down the machine. You can imagine how much money this would save in, let's say, an automotive production line on an overhead gantry when um, the machine would be immediately shut down, continuing to run and tearing out all of the cables and hoses from the chain. The third system within the chain is what we call the ECP. This is a push-pull force detection system. We simply mount a, a, a load sensor on the end of the chain and it, it measures the push and pull force um, which um, the chain requires at that moment. And we can map that against the da um, our data which will compare that to um, what, the, what that force should be. So if the force was to suddenly increase uh, any, or any fluctuations um, go outside a certain envelope, again, we can send an alert back to the iSense unit. The fourth system within the chain is called the CFQ. And now we're not talking about the chain itself. We're talking about the cables that are within the chain. CF um, is um, an acronym for our chain flex cables and the Q for quality, so it's the chain flex quality sensor. And this is where we have um, two spare conductors in the cable. We loop those together and attach them to uh, a, a unit which measures the electricities of the cable. And um, that this can then relate to the data that we've collected over years um, in our test labs at IGUS. We know how that cable should be behaving in um, ideal conditions. We can map that against how the cable is behaving in this specific chain. And if we see that um, we're starting to approach um, the end of the cable life, again, we can give an alert. Recently, we have introduced some uh, some other systems as well. These have been launched um, quite recently at the Hanover Show in Germany, new products for 2017. Um, and we have a, a motion sensor on the, on the chain. You can see that graphic illustrated here. Um, and uh, this motion sensor would uh, wirelessly uh, transmit data to a sensor at the uh, mounted at the um, end of the chain um, to monitor uh, how that chain is moving um, and again comparing that to lab data uh, and these all feed back into lifetime calculation uh, predictions to um, give predictive maintenance Let's now look in detail in how the Chainflex CFQ smart plastic system works. You can see here a, um, a graphic which shows um, how uh, the electrical behavior of a cable um, would change with the number of double strokes when it's operating in an e-chain. While the electrical properties are within this green zone on, on this graph, we know that the, the cable is 
is fine. Well, um, that there, there's no um, potential failure about to occur. You can see there that once we go into this yellow zone, that the gradient has uh, has, has changed. It, it started to uh, increase um, significantly. This means that we're approaching the red zone. The red zone is where the cable is starting to deteriorate and fail, and uh, and we should really be thinking about replacing the cable. So, in this case here, in this example, at around about um, one and a half million double strokes, we would then send a, an alert to say we are now moving into the yellow zone of um, in in this application, um, and. We know we've still got another 250,000 double strokes before we're going to go into enter the red zone, but that gives us ample time to uh, replace that cable before we get critical failure. You can see here the CFQ box and how how this works, and you can see that the, on the traffic light sensors here at the side. At the moment, it is on green. In the film that we watched a few slides back, showing the chain moving backwards and forwards, there was behind that chain, there was a linear system which was moving that whole chain backwards and forwards for this demonstration. This bearing was a drive-in belt drive system. Uh, a drive-in is the brand name for, for all of the IGUS linear bearings, maintenance-free, based on self-lubricating plastics and aluminium rails. We have a smart plastic system within that drive-in bearing too. This detects the wear of the bearing as it's moving along the rail. And this works in exactly the same way as the ECW. In other words, we have an RFID chip within the bearing block. And when the wear reaches a certain limit, where it's always linear in a dry line bearing, um, then an alert is given and the system can be replaced at the customer's leisure. Again, in recent weeks, we've introduced a, an addition to the bearings uh, offering of smart um, on the PRT slewing rings, which are designed to guide rotational movement. We have also um, included a wear sensor within these um, slewing rings, and this works in exactly the same way, RFID sensor, when the wear limit reaches a certain level an alert is given. So that's called the PRTW. This whole technology is moving along at a, a rapid rate. Um, this graphic here shows all of the nine systems which IGUS currently offer within the Smart Plastics um, brand. Let's now look at some real world applications for this technology. Photo here shows a chain that's used in an automotive plant in the UK, and this is fitted with some smart plastic technology. You can see in the center here, I mark it with the laser pointer, the wire which is running the full length of the chain, and this um, is the wire which is connected to the ECB sensor, the brake detection system. There's the chain, it's a long travel chain um, on an overhead gantry carrying um, some robots. We have two opposed chains in this system and in previous to fitting smart plastics technology to this chain, uh, the customer um, would have had to um, replace these chains periodically to avoid potential um, actually if these chains were to fail then that would lead to many hours of production downtime 
within the plant. But by installing um, this ECB system, um, we only now um, replace chains when required. There's another view of the chain from the other side. Now, how all of this data comes together is quite interesting. Um, we, of course, gather all of this data in uh, these iSense units, and an option is to connect these iSense units to an ICOM central communications hub. And this is where the Internet of Things really starts to come together, because this ICOM unit would talk in real time to the IGUS lab and we can then see applications around the world and how how they're operating in real life conditions and compare these to um, our test data that we have in-house and um, give real-time feedback on uh, on on preventative maintenance uh, steps that should be required of course it's an option not all customers would like to um, have this ICOM unit, but this is a, a good step um, and a, a good illustration of how the Internet of Things works together. I mentioned at the start of this presentation that the, um, the, the mantra of IGUS cost down for our customers. That's our mission. And I've explained how smart plastics can reduce maintenance costs, eliminate unplanned downtimes, maximize the service life of machines. It even optimizes the efficiency of equipment and can save time, especially when we move to just-in-time replacements. I hope it's been interesting. Thanks for listening. We will now take some time to answer the questions that have been coming in. Keep them coming. So we'll uh, now start to answer some of the questions that have been coming in. Keep sending these in, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. If we can't answer the questions immediately, then we will have your details and come back to you. So the first question we have in from Kim is, how much is a smart plastic system? Well, that's, uh, that does depend on exactly what technology you, uh, you, you require, um, whether it's ECB, ECP. Um, but really, you can budget on a rough figure of between £1,000 and £1,500 per technology. So um, if you had uh, that application that I showed you the photos um, of the automotive plant, which had the ECB fitted, that would be another £1,500. Uh, and if you compare that to the cost of downtime, then you can see that the savings are, are immense. Remember that we can install this as well. So um, the, the whole system can be uh, fitted, installed, and comes with a guarantee uh, from IGUS. Thank you for that, Kim. Uh, we have another question in here from Brian, and Brian, uh, thank you for this, Brian. Brian asks, can uh, a smart plastic system be retrofitted onto existing chains? And uh, the answer there is that we, we have never done this. Um, for the wear-based system, for the ECW, and also for the, um, the CFQ, the, the cable quality monitoring system, we would not be able to do that because we need to start from a datum uh, where the products are, are new. Um, so for the other systems, for the, um, for example, the ECP and the ECB, the push-pull force and the brake, the, the brake detection system, in theory, we could fit these, uh, uh, retrofit these to um, a chain system but ideally we would like to to fit these 
new. Um, we, as I said, we have we have never actually done that, but we have fitted a number of uh, new ones, of course. Thank you for that. Uh, another question uh, come in. A uh, third question from Nigel. Uh, thank you for this, Nigel. Uh, Nigel's asked, do we have other applications for smart plastics apart from the automotive industry? And the answer to that is very simple. Yes, we do. Uh, the smart plastics brand is really being used to cover a number of um, existing new and emerging technologies and the ECP is one of our existing technologies the uh, push pull detection system and we've used that now for many many years on port cranes uh, where this is a, a valuable part of a, of a crane system and um, some of the other systems as well have been used uh, on um, in, in cranes and materials handling. We are also um, in discussions and in various stages of implementation in other industries as well. So yes, it can be used um, for industries other than the automotive uh, industry. The automotive one is a good one to use for an illustration um, because everyone is uh, aware of the costs of stopping an automotive production line. So it's, it's certainly a good one to use as an illustration. So uh, that's all the questions that uh, we've had in. Um, we will put a copy of this webinar up on the website later and on YouTube. So you could uh, watch it or again or, or send it to any of your colleagues that could be interesting, interested in this. Um, you can email myself questions as well. If you think of anything later, or, um, or if you are watching this um, as a recording, then my email address is maldridge, that's A-L-D-R-I-D-G-E, at igus.co.uk, um, and I'll get back to you individually with an answer um, on that. We do have uh, other webinars planned uh, throughout the year, so please keep an eye on the website for New webinars that will be uh, which will, will will be given from time to time, but uh, for now, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your interest in smart plastics. Goodbye. <laughs>